This video is brought to you by Patreon. By signing up on the Fat Pack Magic Patreon, you get early access to all content, as well as grab bags of valuable cards and amazing mats exclusive to patrons. You can help keep coverage for Paper Magic alive by showing your support on the Fat Pack Magic Patreon today. Hello guys and welcome back to Fat Pack Magic. We are in round four of the FNM Pioneer event and we've got an awesome match for you here today. It's gonna be Jimmy Frick on the left playing Mono Black Aggro and on the right is Rob Fasano playing Mono Black Aggro. It's the mirror match of the century and Rob is on the play starting off with a Blood Soap Champion before passing the turn back to Jimmy. Jimmy playing a Gutter Bones and it comes into play tap, which is fine, but it's able to block and that's pretty, uh, that's pretty important here in these matchups. Rob is gonna play down a Mutable, no he's not. Looks like he's deciding on a Swamp instead. Crashing in for two damage, first blood of the game, bringing Jimmy down to 18 before following it up with the Knight of the Ebon Legion before passing the turn to Jimmy. Jimmy playing his own Swamp, and his deck is a little interesting and a little bit different than Rob Asano's, but he's gonna crash over two, bringing him down to 18 and following up his turn with the Scrappy Scrounger. He passed the turn back to Rob, who's deciding on whether or not he's going to make an end of the turn play, and it looks like a fatal push is going to knock out the three power creature and start off on Rob's turn. This time he plays the mutable and crashes in for two, or excuse me, three, excuse me, uh, six damage, bringing Jimmy down to twelve, and this is going to put a counter of the knight of on the counter of a counter on the knight of the Ebon Legion. And that's really hard to say. So he passes the turn back to Jimmy, and Jimmy's just gonna crash him for two more, bringing Rob down to 16. Wondering if the rate, if Jimmy can win the race here in this situation. Jimmy really deciding he's got a spawn of mayhem, and the spectacle trigger is on there, but he's gonna go with a witch's oven instead and pass the turn back. Rob starting up his turn with the swamp, and I mean he can activate the mutable here. There's not much fear. There's no fear on Rob's side. Here he goes, crashing in again. Six damage, all at Jimmy's face. What does Jimmy have? Two mana. And it's a Grasp of Darkness, and that's going to chew up that Knight of the Evening Legion. And Jimmy's only going to take four damage, going down to eight. But Rob has got the follow up. It's a Scrap Heap Scrounger of his own. And he passes the turn back to Jimmy. Jimmy in a little bit of a predicament here. He really needs to get some more damage on board. And two is gonna be a little bit. It's gonna trigger that spectacle for the spawn of mayhem. And he's able to pass the turn back with a 4-4 flying and trampling blocker. But will it be enough for him to get to Rob? Rob is tapping three, tapping the mute ball with summoning sickness. And Here's a murderous rider, but instead of letting it get killed by it, he's gonna uh, sacrifice the spawn to the witch's oven, making two food tokens, and Rob crashes in for six or seven more damage. The mutable is gonna take him down by a fatal push, and now Jimmy is firmly on the back foot here. And uh, he's got food tokens, and it's gonna be able to buffer his life total. He's got a blocker that gutter bones can block but he really needs to get some more offensive pressure here. And Rob Pisano is looking pretty at this point in time. Now the question is, I mean, I guess Jimmy can bolster his life total by chewing up a food token or maybe both and blocking the scrap heap, only taking two, but instead he's gonna, no, he's not gonna play the Witch's Oven. He's gonna play the Spawn of Mayhem instead and it's going to be a big, fat, bulky blocker that will allow him to start eating through some of Rob Asano's creatures. But Jimmy is really uh, in a bad position here. He's going to have to make some uh, desperate blocks. Spawn of Mayhem is going to block the Mutable. A Gutter Bones is going to block the Scrap Heap. He's going to take two, go down to one, and now that Spectacle, or excuse me, that Spawn Trigger is going to mean that Jimmy is going to be taking one each turn. Well, both players are going to take one each turn. However, with the trigger on the stack, Jimmy's going to eat a food token, take one life, leaving Jimmy at three and Rob at 13, and putting a plus one plus one counter on that uh, spawn of mayhem. 
So now Jimmy is pretty much on blocking duty. Rob is almost out of cards, but Jimmy is at three life, and each turn he's gonna start taking damage. But those food tokens are gonna quickly put him out of reach from Rob and be able to leave Jimmy going on the offensive here shortly. Now Jimmy deciding on whether or not he wants to have food token available for the next turn or if he wants to go on offense. I think, I mean, Spot Mayhem is a great walker here in this situation, uh, but Jimmy, I don't think Jimmy can take the chance of making a swing here. That spawn is a great 5-5 creature, and it's going to get bigger every turn. I mean, eventually, it's going to put Rob on a two-turn clock. The question is, will Jimmy live long enough to be able to make that clock happen? Now, the great thing about that Witch's Oven is that it made it so that Murderous Rider, rather than going on an adventure, just outright died because of Spell Fizzle. So, end of turn, Rob brings back the Scrap Heap Scrounger. He's drawn a land... And he's got a, what looks to be a Rankle. So Jimmy blocks the three damage from the Scrap Heap Scrounger, takes two, goes down to one from the Blood Soak Champion. Rob plays a land. Here's the Scrap Heap Scrounger. He's going to be able to play another one at the end of turn on Jimmy's turn while holding up two mana, which could be a Graft of Darkness, a Fatal Push, or a, I mean, well, I don't think there's any other issue aside from that. So Jimmy deciding on whether or not he wants to pop the food token now, or if he wants to bring back the Scrap Heap Scrounger now. The Scrap Heap, uh, I mean, he does need to start getting some damage in there, but maybe, uh, I mean, the unfortunate thing is, is that he's going to be out of food tokens, so he's going to start needing to sacrifice things to be able to make more later. But he's going to pull the Scrap Heap Scrounger back from the graveyard, start his turn, Spectacle Trigger, gain three life, lose one, Jimmy stabilizes at 3, Rob is at 12, and Jimmy, looks like Jimmy has a Kalidus in hand, which is going to be great. Problem is, he doesn't have the mana to cast it. Swings in for 3, and to be honest, that's pretty much the only thing he can do with that Scrap Heap Scrounder. And it's going to put Rob down to 9, and Jimmy passes the turn. Rob makes another Scrap Heap Scrounger. So he's got eight power on board, and here's Rankle, and that is going to be enough for lethal, and Jimmy scoops it up. Game win goes to Rob for game one, and now we are going to see how different these decks can be. The Witch's Oven, an interesting card, but it didn't seem like it did enough. Will it do more in game two? And we'll find out in just a second. And here we go, on to game two. Now, I think Rob Asano is going to want to cite in some more lifelink or life gain options for his deck against Jimmy. And Jimmy, I mean, he's got that Witch's Oven, which does a lot of work in gaining life on its own, as well as blanking Rob Asano's removal, especially that Murderous Rider, which Rob is going to have to be on the lookout for. Now, Jimmy looks like he's going to be on the play, and he's going to start off with the Swamp into that Witch's Oven. So Rob's got to really be on the lookout. He plays a Swamp and passes the turn back to Jimmy. Jimmy plays out the Mutable. Here's a Scrap Heap Scrounger coming in. Rob draws Swamp Pass. Looks like Rob is on the control plan here as Jimmy takes his turn and swings in at Rob to deal three damage. But a Grasp of Darkness in response to that is going to... Uh, Witch's Oven is going to sack the Scrounger. And Jimmy is going to pump out another Scrap Heap scra Scrounger before passing the turn back to Rob. Rob looks like he's got to use that Murderous Rider now. The Witch's Oven is tapped. Rob is going to take two life, but his Murderous Rider is going to start getting a little bit of value. He passes the turn back to Jimmy, who's drawn his own Murderous Rider, but it looks like he's down on lands, unable to play out a fourth land, which is not pivotal, but pretty important, especially in these matchups. He taps two mana. Looks like he's going to swing in with the Muta Vault, activating that, bringing Rob down to 16 and passing the turn back to Rob. Rob has drawn another Muta Vault for himself, but it looks like he's got two Rankles ready to start launching out the pain. The question is, does he want to keep Man up for removal? I would say not really, because that Witch of, Witch's Oven isn't only going to blank his removal, but it's also going to prevent the Murderous Rider from going on an adventure. So Rob 
here's the life link I was talking about. Here's Aether Spear Harvester and a Gutter Bones in a play tapped as well. Now next turn that Gutter Bones can be able to crew the Harvester and two energy counters means that Rob is going to be able to gain a total of six life. Jimmy, no land passing the turn back, but he's got a stacked hand full of removal. Rob draws his card for the turn. He's on four lands, he's okay. Two Munivolts means that he's not gonna be able to play out a lot of uh, different spells, but two Munivolts means that uh, he'll be able to swing in for four damage. So he's gonna crew, uh, play the Murderous Rider, crew up the Eighth Industry Harvester, and crash in for five. However, Jimmy has his own Murderous Rider, which is gonna kill off that Harvester, and he's only gonna take two damage in that exchange, and two from the Murderous Rider, going down to 16. Jimmy finally finds his fourth land. And he's got a few options. Here's a Murderous Rider in as well. And it's going to be able to ping back and forth with the other Murderous Rider or probably trade with that Gutter Bones. Rob takes his draw for the turn. It's another land, which isn't terrible, but it looks like he's going to start putting out that Rankle. He's got it queued up in his hand, but the other option is Maybe just going him with the Mutabolts, dealing 8 damage. The only problem is, that Murderous Rider really affects combat math, and it'll eat up a Mutabolt for sure, and uh, put Rob not only down a land, but the 2 life of the other Mutabolt will be sort of negligible. Rob really going in the tank here. Now it seems like he's gonna play out the Rankle, and what's he swinging in with? Uh, just Rankle. All right, Rankle comes in, Jimmy deciding on whether or not he wants to take the damage. And Jimmy has a Fatal Push in hand, and it looks like, oh, this is a very clever play. So Jimmy is going to sack the Murderous Rider, Rider which is going to trigger Revolt on the Fatal Push, allowing him to deal uh, kill off the Wrangle before it can deal damage and creating another food token as well. Rob simply plays a land and passes the turn back. He was not expecting that. Which is up and really doing some work on uh, versatility for Jimmy's deck. It looks like Jimmy has another really interesting card in hand. And he also has his own Wrangle. But... Rob would be able to sacrifice the Gutter Bones and trade with the Rankle, which doesn't seem very good. I mean, he might just be able to use the Murderous Rider to kill off Rob Pisano's Murderous Rider and hold a 2-3 lifelinker on backup. Or maybe he wants to get a little more tricky. And it seems that's the plan. He's going with Desecrated Tomb into a Witch's Oven. Now, Desecrated Tomb is a card I haven't seen before. And like, none, none that I can actually remember. But whenever one or more creatures leave the graveyard, create a 1-1 black token with flying. Now, this is a really weird tech, and I have to applaud Jimmy for like looking through these old cards and finding these old combinations that normally people wouldn't expect. But Desecrated Tomb is going to be able to generate a lot of value for Jimmy's deck with all the recursion he's got going on. However, first, he has to figure out how to deal with 8 damage that's coming into his face and bringing him down to 8 and pumping up Rob to 18. Rob doesn't really have to deploy any more threats because Jimmy's got an empty blank board. Here's another land for Jimmy, and Jimmy only has 2 cards in hand. He passes the turn back to Rob. Or it looks like. Wait. No, no, Rob was just reorganizing his lands. So Jimmy, he's going to cast the Murderous Rider just on its own and pass the turn back to Rob. Not getting any value off the adventure, but he's still got a 2-3 with lifelink that's going to be able to start, like, uh, you know, keeping those Mutavolts at bay. Rob, on the other hand, has a suite of removal that just doesn't seem like it's going to do much against those ovens. But he plays out Rankle, crashes in for three, and now Jimmy looks like he's got a plan of his own. He's going to spend two mana. 
and looks like he's going to bring back a scrap heap scrounger for another scrap heap scrounger and desecrated tomb trigger is going to stack twice because one is getting exiled from the graveyard which counts as leaving the graveyard and the other is going to come into play which counts as leaving the graveyard so jimmy is going to get a total of two bat tokens off one exchange in that uh and one bat token is going to uh find its way running in front of the rankle as rob Bassano passes the turn back he was not expecting that one and now it looks like jimmy has drawn liliana the last hope and uh i mean that could start killing off gutter bones maybe pull a trick with the other murderous rider and jimmy opts to swing in dealing five damage one murderous rider is going to get in front of the other rob is going to take seven uh three damage but gain two life going down to 17 and jimmy is going to gain a critical two life and liliana the last hope is going to come in and give the other murderous rider minus two minus one which is enough to kill it off sending it to the bottom of the library as jimmy has not only one but uh well he has one bat token and a rankle in hand as well as a mutable activation robisano's got a fatal push but jimmy's gonna sacrifice the bat in response with the witch's oven making another food token as rob has a uh a bevy of threats that he's got to deal with. He's got to deal with the Liliana. He's got to deal with Jimmy's life total. And all the while, hopefully not get clustered up by bats. Now he's got a grasp of darkness. And it doesn't look like Jimmy has any, uh, any bat tokens in play at the moment. That doesn't mean that in his hand isn't a way to do it or on the field. So he's gonna tap three mana. He's gonna murder his rider, the Liliana! Which is a great way to bypass that Witch's Oven and uh, take two life and be able to get the murderous rider into play on the next turn. Now unfortunately the way he uh, the the way he has to do that, he's not gonna have mana up for that uh, last grasp. And he crashes in for three damage. Now this means that there might be some sacrificing creatures going on as Jimmy goes down to seven. And the question is, are we discarding? What abilities are we using? It's a discard and a sack. So Jimmy is going to have to discard that rankle in his hand and he sacks the Scrap Heap Scrounger. Rapasano discards a land and the Gutter Bones before maybe passing the turn, deciding whether or not he wants to pass the turn. He gives the pass to Jimmy. Jimmy is going to play the Scrap Heap Scrounger. In response, Rob Asano is going to fatal push that murderous rider. Jimmy is going to sack it to the Witch's Oven, but it's going to trigger a bat token because the bat, uh, the, the murderous rider left the graveyard to go underneath the library and the Scrappy Scrounger exiled the Rankle and came into play. So Jimmy's got three bats, which is enough to kill off that Rankle. But now Jimmy is in the driver's seat here. Those Witch's Ovens, however, he really needs to start drawing some cards and getting more creatures into his graveyard, especially to trigger more of that Scrappy Scrounger. Players correcting the fact that Rankle should be in exile. And it looks like Jimmy's going to animate a Mutavault and come crashing in for... Uh, how many tokens is he going to leave back to block? So he's going to crash in for 2, 4, 7, bringing Rob down to 8, quickly closing the gap in this game. Rob has got to find a way through. One bat token is not going to allow him to deal the damage, but he has found Kalidus. And Kalidus could make a big break in the game, except, I don't know, is he going to play it? No, he's instead going to swing in with the Rankle, and that's going to get Grasp of Darkness, and now he's got to deploy Kalidus, which is going to be an amazing blocker for, uh, for Rob, because every time a creature dies, it's going to be exiled, and that's going to make a 2-2 zombie, and Kalidus is going to uh, gain Rob 3 life off of each exchange. 
to me has drawn for turn. The only thing is, those bats, they fly. And they fly really well. Jimmy has drawn his card, and he's debating on how he wants to go about his attacks because he can't let Kalidas come in and gain life. But that's going to be a really tall order to play. But Jimmy has found a Cauldron Familiar, which is going to gain him one life and drain Rob for one life. And he's got a bunch of food. He's got a ton of food. He could go lethal on Rob right now by sacrificing the cauldron. Uh, well, it's not lethal, but like he can get pretty close. No, he can't because Kalidus exiles it. So the Grass of Darkness is going to kill off the cauldron familiar, keeping it exiled, making a 2-2 zombie token for Kalidus. And Rob crashes in for three damage, potentially five lifelink. Oh, but here's the kicker. Jimmy blocks with a bat token, and before Kalidas can deal damage, Jimmy sacks it to a food token. And then he's going to lose one life, using Castle Lockwing to draw a card. And how many times is he going to be able to pull the stunt off and prevent Rob from gaining life? Now, the zombie token is going to be able to block, but the Scrap Heap Scrounger cannot block. So Jimmy crashes in for one measly damage, bringing Rob down to four, holding back one bat token to block. And here comes... Here comes a Spawn of Mayhem, which is going to ping Rob for one damage next turn, and... Unless Rob has drawn, can draw removal, this is going to be game. Because the spawn of May, he can, Jimmy is going to be able to block and sack with the Witch's Oven, preventing Rob from getting life. And then next turn, the crackback for five in the air. Again, preventing Rob from gaining any life off that Kalidas. Jimmy's Witch's Ovens have completely neutralized one of the most clutch spells in mono black aggro, Kalidas. Wow, that's what Witch's Oven can do. Holy crap! Oh my god, that, that that was insane. Rob had one of the most clutch spells for Mono Black Aggro. Khalid is gaining life, and Jimmy just neutralized it, made it ir like irrelevant in terms of that game matchup. And we are going to see how they deal with it in game three. Can Jimmy come back with a two-one lead into a two-one lead and take the match? You'll find out here in just a second. All right, guys, we are going on to game three. Rob Pisano and Jimmy Frick are one at one, and the winner of this game is going to go on to the finals, where $100 in store credit here at Darkside Games is going to be on the line. So both players have got to make really tight plays, and unfortunately, Jimmy is going to be down a card, taking a mulligan, and he's going to be on the draw, which might kind of fix it a little bit, but... It's going to be really tough for Jimmy to come back from this. However, his deck has the will and has the merit to do so. Rob Pisano starts off with the Gutter Bones, a turn one, and Jimmy has his own Blood Soap Champion to follow it up with. Now, Gutter Bones can block, but it doesn't look like it's going to be doing much of that as it crashes in for two, bringing Jimmy down to 18, and Rob playing a signature Knight of the Even Legion. Before passing the turn back to Jimmy. Jimmy quickly cracks back with a Blood Soap Champion, bringing Rob down to uh, 18, and then a Cauldron Familiar, draining him for one and gaining Jimmy one life. A 1-1 one -one with a uh, little bit of familiarity. And it's a cat, so that's what it does, right? So Rob takes his turn, plays out in her Herborg, turning everything into a Swamp, which is pretty good for both players, and he pumps out an Aether Sphere Harvester. That lifelink that didn't get to do much in the previous round. Now, the question is, does Jimmy have removal for it this time around? Jimmy plays Immutable, and it doesn't look like he's going to be crashing in. Instead, he's going to play that Desecrated Tomb, which in the previous game had made a ton of bat tokens, and now Jimmy's got a couple recursion creatures ready and willing to make some bats. He passes the turn back to Rob, and Rob... 
got a few decisions to make here. He's gonna have a gutter bones, crew up that eighth tree harvester, and crashes in for four damage. And the knight of the even legion with a potential pump. Rob decides not to pump. Instead, he's gonna use that energy, and it's gonna gain him three life, bringing him up to twenty, and bringing Jimmy down to fifteen. A pretty big swing in life totals here, because Jimmy's gonna have to make that up really quick, really fast. And Rob, not wanting the chance of Witch's Oven, just plays out a murderous rider, and at end of turn, Knight of the Even Legion is gonna get a plus one, plus one counter. Jimmy draws his card for the turn. Looks like he's got Rankle in hand, and that could start gumming up the board a little bit, making bat tokens, uh, because creatures are gonna come back. And here it comes, Rankle swinging in for three at Rob. Rob takes three, he goes down to 17. Now the question is, what effects is Wrangle gonna have? Looks like a sack ability and a discard. Two cards go into the yard and Wrangle uh, on board. But that eight and a harvester doesn't much care about it because it's gonna gain another three life on another swing. But here looks like a murderous rider. Now that Witch's Oven isn't in play, it's gonna kill off that Rankle, dealing two damage to Rob, equalizing life totals at 15 15, but those are gonna quickly change. As Rob decides on whether or not he wants to crew up that 8th Industry Harvester yet, he could leave it back on defense duty. But he's gonna have the Knight crew up 8th Industry Harvester as he comes in for 5 damage, 3 flying, 2 on the ground. And uh, one's a 2-3 lifelinker, and the other one is deciding on whether or not wants the lifelink as well. Think it's fine. Yep. Five damage lifelink, bringing Rob up to 20 and Jimmy down to 10, and putting another counter on that Knight of the Even Legion. Jimmy really could use a Witch's, call, uh, witch's Oven here. But uh, that Cauldron Familiar is looking pretty lonely without any food to come bring it back. Jimmy crashing in for three bringing Rob down to 17, and now Jimmy is going to be able to start making some bats. He brings back one Gutter Bones, or a Bloodstock Champion, and then brings back Gutter Bones. This is going to make two bats, meaning that Jimmy is going to be able to start chump blocking that Aether Sphere Harvester, and he might be able to uh, chump block that Murderous Rider as well and prevent a lot of damage from coming through. But Rob seems fine. That uh, Knight of the Even Legion is looking pretty beefy as a 3-4. Well, he could use the Mutavolt to crew up the Aether Shreer Harvester as well, and just put three damage out of reach. But instead, it looks like he's just going to crash in for a potential five damage. Jimmy deciding on, yep, he's gonna use two bats to chump block, and Rob is still gonna gain two life going up to 19, and he casts the other Murderous Rider and pass the turn back to Jimmy. Jimmy draws for turn. He's not in a great situation here. He really needs that uh, Witch's Oven to start kind of making more bats for a Scrap Heap Scrounger. Now, two of his dudes, one of his, I mean, his two one dudes aren't going to get through the murderous Ryder very well because Ryder is a 2-3, but they don't, really do anything on defense either. Mate, well, Jimmy has Murderous Rider of his own in hand. And he could use that to blow up the Aether Shear Harvester next turn if it gets crewed. Or he could try and bait it out now by making Rob Pisano activate it, but I don't see any reason why Pisano would activate to block a 2-1 two, uh, two creature Except for Liliana that got blown out, uh, his other murderous rider. Jimmy really taking the time here. Here's Gutterbones coming into play tap. It can serve as a blocker, and he decides to just pass the turn back. He says it's not worth sacrificing a Bloodsoaked Champion to try and do a few more triggers. But I, I guess he wants to hold back the murderous rider that he has in hand and try and get one of them, or probably get that Knight of the Even Legion before it gets too big. Rob kind of lining up his creatures here. He could go really big with that Mutaball crewing the 
acres for your harvester, but it looks like he's just gonna crash in for four. Four lifelink and holding back a knight and the Aether Sphere Harvester on defense. I think he senses Jimmy having that Murderous Rider, so he doesn't want to sacrifice his big Aether Sphere Harvester, but he's pretty fine just uh, shopping two of those Murderous Riders. Jimmy takes four damage, Rob gains four life, a Murderous Rider comes in, killing off that Knight of the Even Legion at end of turn and sending his own rider on an adventure. He's gonna take two life from this exchange, but he's going to be able to cast the murderous rider on his own step, on his own turn, and have a two, three lifelink blocker. However, in response, Rob grasps of darkness's own Knight of the Even Legion, and that means that Jimmy's murderous rider is going to fizzle. And that is harsh. So Jimmy found another desecrated tomb, but he doesn't have enough to really make it work. That Witch's Oven is a critical piece of the puzzle for Jimmy's deck, and the Cauldron Familiar kind of just hanging out without being able to drain any life onto Jimmy's side of the field. Jimmy realizes he has to start doing something fast, and he needs to make that tokens. So here comes in four damage from to Rob Pisano, bringing him down to 19, but Rob is in a comfortable spot. He can sacrifice four damage and not let Jimmy get any of the bat tokens going. And Jimmy is only at four life. Jimmy plays a Desecrated Tomb and a Blood Soaked Champion. He passes the turn back to Rob. All Rob needs to do is crew up that Aether Shear Harvester, swing in for four, uh, more damage. But he's tapping up. Here's Mute, Mutable, maybe? He's going to crew the Age of Shreer Harvester and swing in at Jimmy, bringing Jimmy down to one. He plays a land for turn and passes back. Jimmy's at one. And I think Rob realizes that uh, he had the option for lethal there. But he missed it. Yep, he had lethal. Well, no, he didn't because gutter bones can still block. So, nope. No, that, that gutter bones in his wild blocking ways. No, it just ate the shield harvester. Jimmy reveals he drew a land, and the match win is going to go to Rob Pisano. And Rob is going to go on to the final round where he's going to be playing for over $100 of store credit here at Dark Side Games. But that's it for us here today at Fat Pack Magic. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you tap that notification bell, hit subscribe, and leave a like, not just for me, but for my players too. And if you want like behind the scenes content, check us out on Instagram where we post up deck lists and stats and all kinds of other stuff that I got planned. And if you like this kind of content and you want to support it, make sure to check us out on Patreon. Your support means so much to me and we're almost at the $100 mark, which is pretty huge if you ask me. And once we hit the $500 mark, I'll finally be able to invest in doing Twitch streams. And I'm not talking about like Twitch streams like in my studio playing MTG Arena. I'm talking like live coverage streams of these FNM events that you guys are watching right now. Every big event, every Pioneer 1K that we're doing, I'm talking like Magic Fest level broadcasting every week. And with your support, I can make that happen. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and may all your packs be fat.